My friends, it's been a while since I visited this technique, so I thought it made a lot of sense to circle back and do it with a lot of fun examples. Do your drums ever feel really lackluster and they have no punch to them, kind of like this? But you want them to be a lot more in your face and full sounding, like this? Well, by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to do that, my friends, so stay tuned. So what's happening, fam? Miami here with JST, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but I did a video with Bob Katz a while ago, and that's the guy that invented parallel compression or was at least given credit for being the person that started parallel compression. Well, during that time, he gave me a whole new perspective on what parallel compression could be used for. So buckle up because we're about to dive into the world of parallel compression. We're gonna start off crazy here number one parallel compression on your entire mix well kind of your entire mix the rear bus trick was made by andrew sheps and the concept behind it is taking the entire mix besides the drums sending them to a bus and then slamming them with an 1176 or fest style compressor you then start to slowly raise it up underneath the mix until it starts to sound really full and he tends to do this with an ssl compressor but I've even found ways of making this sound good with using an SSL. It really feels like the whole mix gels more once you do this and the vocals are going to hit the compressor the hardest, not the drum. So take a listen to what this effect does and how powerful of a tool that it can be. It's really easy to set up as well, you know, just make sure that when you're doing it that you're sending it in dual mono. That's one of the moves that I wish that I had learned earlier because it's so much more useful than some of those flash in the pan type techniques that you see today being thrown around online. But that is our first means of parallel compression. And the next one that everyone goes on about is parallel compressing your drum shells. And the thing about drums is we know that it's the backbone of the mix, right? If your snare is trash, then that means that your mix is trash because snares usually bring some character resulting in big energy. Read that back again in slow-mo. Because snares usually bring some character resulting in big energy. And you guys and girls can show me some big energy by hitting that subscribe button, tapping that notification bell, and of course, giving this video a like if you're enjoying it so far. My transition game has truly leveled up and gotten even crazier but yeah it makes a lot of sense to send shells to their own parallel bus because they have all of that really rich transient information you know it's kind of the key for making the song sound full and punchy but let's get a good example of how small drums can sound without using it and then hear what it sounds like once you add it
probably the most practical use of parallel compression when it comes to heavy music. If you need to find a way for your kick, snare, and toms to always cut through a mix, this is probably your easiest way of doing that every time. Pair this with a transient designer or a clipper and you're all set. And if you really liked how that example sounded, I was using JST Maximizer, so you can go download your free trial of that today by clicking the link in the description below. Back to the rear bus trick, right? So you can actually use the rear bus trick and the drum bus parallel at the same time. Since you leave the drums out of the rear bus, you can dial in your drum parallel to make sense with that trick, and now you have better control over your entire mix. But let's go on to the next part of parallel compression. And uh, this is one of my favorites because I find that it works in every genre parallel compression on your vocals man you know as a vocalist this is one of the ways to make sure that every time that you have a vocal that doesn't seem like it's hitting right that it punches through and cuts through. It allows you to compress a vocal as hard as you want to because you just blend it in with the original signal. The level of control that it adds with an aggressive, consistent compression is, well, unparalleled. So you're basically going to double the main vocal and on the duplicate vocal, you are going to slam it with compression. But there's a couple things you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind here. You're going to want to take out some of those low mids because those will really build up and you'll be compressing those too. You'll wanna roll off the low end, everything under around 100 hertz and on top of that you're going to want to put a de-esser uh, that might be before or after the compressor because when you do that you're going to make sure all those heavy s's that got compressed with that probably 20 to 1 ratio you're using don't come poking their head out on top of the main vocal that you have because we're trying to enhance the vocal we're not trying to do anything that's going to bring major issues you get what i'm saying so let's show an example of a vocal that's struggling to cut through the mix and can easily cut through by just using a little bit of parallel compression. You know, see for yourself. I'm my own worst enemy. I keep myself from a better me. Something changed in me lately that pushed me over the line. I can feel it inside. I swear a part of me died. Is it easy to find a waste of my time? Cause I say too much and I feel too little. Life just feels like a messed up brittle. Tell me how I ended up this brittle. Does anybody know why? If I try my best, do I survive? What's the point of holding on when it lasts this long? I wanna feel alive. Isn't it crazy how a simple duplication move can take a vocal from the starting point that we had all the way to being that really in your face vocal that we were just listening to afterwards? All I wanna say is like, don't be afraid to try new things out. Well, I say new. This technique's like 40 something years old, but it might be new to you, right? I will say this is one of the techniques that changed the way I compress vocals forever. So let's go over all of these one more time. The first one, the rare bus trick, parallel compression on the entire mix besides drums, then drum shell parallel compression, followed by parallel compression on your vocals. You know, I like to think of parallel compression as the knife, and with these three techniques, you can make just about anything cut through the mix when you need to. But why stop there? Get experimental and start trying it on other things, you know? I'm sure when Andrew Shebs tried to first do rear bus compression, people thought that it was a wild thing. But look at him now, you know? It's one of the new up and coming things that people are talking about. All of these little techniques are just little moves that become part of our mixing palette and change the way that we make audio forever. But you don't know what you don't know. And hopefully I've shed some light on this for those of you that don't understand parallel compression, or maybe some that do understand it, but this might be reconfirming for people that didn't know whether it was the right way to go. So is this how you use parallel compression? Is this something that you're gonna try out later today? Make sure to leave it in the comments and I will chat with you fine people like I always do. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time, and tap that bell for notifications so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later.